And then the next thing that's holding it back is there's a little blue and white power connector cable here that's attached to the motherboard. Or excuse me, that looks like it's for the speaker. So we'll go ahead and pull that one out. Once you've got that one out, then that whole piece can be set aside. And so you can see now we've got access to the motherboard. Um, the processor is right underneath this silver bracket here, but it's on the other side of the motherboard. So we're going to have to actually take the motherboard out to get to the processor. Um, to do that, there's a couple of other ribbon cables we need to disconnect here. One that's run into the USB ports on the side of the case. And there's another one right here for the hard drive. Go ahead and disconnect that one. Or excuse me, for the optical drive. Which is sitting right here. Um, also, there's a cable coming up to the top right of the motherboard here. Uh, we'll go ahead and pull that one out. Okay, and then there's also a ribbon cable here that's got a white bracket on it. Okay, in this case, the white bracket is actually part of the ribbon cable. We'll go ahead and pull that out. Okay, and at this point, we can continue removing the screws that we'll need to to get the motherboard out. You can see that there's nothing at this point really holding it on the bottom edge. Um, there's one screw holding it on the top right. There's a little black screw. Go ahead and remove that one. To actually get the motherboard out, we're going to need to remove this fan along with it. This fan has a heat sink on it that goes to the processor. But to get the fan disconnected, there's some screws around the edge. One down in a hole here on the bottom, and then one at the top and one at the side. So we'll go ahead and take those screws out. Okay, so once those screws are out around the fan assembly, then that'll allow the whole motherboard to come out. That fan is going to come out with the motherboard, and then you've also got these ports on the side of the case, the HDMI port, USB port, the microphone and headphone ports. So you kind of have to pull the motherboard up and out to the side at the same time. Okay, when you get underneath the motherboard, you'll see that there's a red cable, a red and black cable going to the motherboard with a white connector. And that's preventing the motherboard from coming all the way out. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect that connector. It's on the bottom side of the motherboard. Okay, that red and black connector was a little tough to get off of there. Once that's off, then the motherboard can actually come out of the case. And right, so we can go ahead and set the motherboard here by itself. Get the case out of the way. Okay, and so here's our processor. You can see it's got four silver screws holding it in, and then another black screw on the side that actually holds it in the socket. These four silver screws are going to allow us to take the heat sink and fan off and actually physically get to the processor. So we'll go ahead and take those off. So once those are off, you should be able to lift the heat sink and fan. Okay, when you start to pull it away, you'll see there's a little connector for the fan. bottom of your heat sink and the top of your processor, there's going to be some thermal compound left over from when they installed that in the first time. We're going to want to clean off that thermal compound. Um, in this case, I'm not going to be reusing the processor. Um, to get the processor out of the socket, you just turn this screw a half a turn. Okay, and then that actually releases the processor from the socket. Just pull it straight up and out. Um, in this case, I'm not going to be putting the process, this processor back in, so I don't need to clean that off 
just yet. I'll do it later. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set that processor aside. You will want to clean off any thermal compound that's left over on the heat sink, though. To do that, you just use some cloth, uh, you know, some lint-free cloth if you've got it. Um, some rubbing alcohol usually works pretty well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and clean that off, and then I'll be right back with you. Okay, so now that I've got that thermal compound cleaned off, you should have a nice shiny surface there. If you did use alcohol or some kind of solvent to clean it, which I did, just make sure you give it some time to dry. You don't want any of that left on there when we put the, on the new processor. Uh, I've just noticed now, too, that this heat sink goes out and covers up a couple of other modules on the motherboard here. I'm guessing one's probably the graphics processor. Uh, I'm not sure what the other one is, but they've got a couple of little pads here. Um, looks like one of them, the top one here, which will become you know, the bottom one when we turn it back over. Looks like that's actually got a, a spot of thermal compound, kind of a square of it on there. Uh, looks like it's still in pretty good shape though, so I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, you know, put some new thermal compound on there if you're worried about that. Uh, I think I'll just leave it as it is. It looks like it's still in pretty good shape. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is drop our new processor into the socket here. We're going to pull it out of the static bag. Okay, and you want to make sure you line up the new processor just like the old one was. Um, there's really only one way these can go into the socket, uh, but you do want to make sure it goes in the right way. You'll notice on these AMD processors, there's a little gold triangle. Um, if I'm looking at it right side up, it's on the bottom left. Um, the way the socket is positioned with the screw at the top, it's actually on the bottom left as well. So we just drop that processor right on there. And you shouldn't have to use any force, it should just drop right in. Okay, just make sure it's flat on there, and then we can go ahead and tighten this black screw. Okay, and that will actually lock the processor right into the socket there. Okay, we need to apply some new thermal compound to the top of this CPU. Uh, I'm using Arctic Silver 5, I don't know if I mentioned that, it's a pretty popular compound. If you like another one, go ahead and use a different one. Uh, these mobile processors really have quite a small area to put that compound on. Um, so you just need the small amount. Okay, so once you've got a nice little dot of compound on there, we're going to go ahead and reattach the heat sink assembly here. I'm going to go ahead and plug in this fan connector first. Okay, and you want to just lower the heat sink straight down onto where it's going to end up. I'm going to press it onto those other two modules that it's covering up, and then we're going to go ahead and put these screws back in. I'm going to kind of get all four of them started here and just tighten them a little bit at a time so we get a nice even distribution along the processor there. Okay, so that's it. We've got the new processor in there, the heat sink and the fan are attached, the power connector on the fan, so all we do now is just basically reverse everything we've done, put the motherboard back into the case, uh, reconnect, make sure you reconnect all the ribbon cables, everything that was disconnected to get to this point, um, you know, and then put the case all back together and you should be good to go. Thanks for watching this video, and if you have any other questions about your EME442, um, hopefully I can help you out. If you wanted to just upgrade the RAM or the hard drive, then it's really easy. All you have to do is remove that first little back plate on the back side of the laptop, and you can easily just do those without taking the whole thing apart. Thanks again for watching.